So today, uh, I would like to introduce the the one and the only uh, Jonathan Washington, uh, who is the author of Data Governance for the Mies and also author of uh, Smart Cities for the Mies. So Jonathan, uh, welcome. Good morning, Laurent, uh, from San Francisco. It sounds, uh, I mean, just by hearing San Francisco, it sounds uh, fantastic from a uh, European uh, European standpoint. So, uh, Jonathan, can you, uh, in a few words, um, introduce yourself? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thanks for having me on this uh, webinar this morning uh, or this evening over in Europe. Uh, yeah, I'm currently the founder of a, of a small uh, boutique consulting and education firm called Human Future. And I'm also a professor at a number of universities, including the University of San Francisco. And I'm also an author, as you had mentioned. I, I have written Data Governance for Dummies and Smart Cities for Dummies. I've written some other books, too. I've written some books for kids around smart cities. And recently, okay. I just released my uh, book on cryptocurrency, actually. Yeah, indeed. Uh, plenty of topics, uh, I mean, uh, using or around data, because uh, I guess uh, smart cities, they will uh, generate a lot of data from an IoT standpoint, and, uh, and, and you need to understand. Uh, and also cryptocurrencies uh, involves uh, a lot of data, but we'll come back uh, to, to data flows. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about the uh, genesis of this book, and, and why did you just decide to write a book on data governance? Yeah. Um, well, look, uh, I, I've been a technology leader for, for many, many years. I've been a CIO twice, a chief information officer for two different organizations, one in the private sector and one in the, in the public sector, helped to, to run a city here in Silicon Valley. And, you know, it, it doesn't matter, you know, what organization you're in, uh, whether it's small or, or uh, it's a Fortune you know, 500 business, uh, you're managing and you're governing data to, to some degree. So my work has always involved uh, during my technology career, uh, managing data and governing data in, in, to some degree. Um, but about five or six years ago, I was invited to write a, uh, and develop a video course on uh, data governance, which I did for LinkedIn Learning. And that course was very successful. Uh, in fact, continues to be very successful uh, today. I just did a completely new version. And, uh, you know, having been asked to write that, I had to get deep into the topic myself, like in a really formal way. And I learned a lot about it. And I realized just how remarkably important the topic is. And I also realized that the marketplace was poorly educated on this, that leaders wanted their organizations to be data driven and wanted to have a lot more success uh, with their data assets, but were uh, often not really succeeding. So um, I had a passion for the topic. And, and, and talking to my publisher, Wiley Publishing, uh, we were talking about you know, what books uh, I might write next. And they had done their own market research and, and, and figured out that there was high demand for this uh, topic. And the demand was growing, as, as you well know, uh, working for a, a data governance company. And so they, they came back to me and they said, hey, uh, would you be interested in writing another uh, dummies book? And I like that platform. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not a book for dummies. It's, it's just a great <laughs> brand, of course. Um, it's the same book I would have written, you know, under any title. Um, and I said, you know what? I, I don't know if I, if I can write 300 pages about data governance. I, I mean, I, I, you know, the topic is important. Uh, but maybe I can you know, kick out a, a hundred pages. Well, uh, a few months later, I'd written you know over three hundred pages about this important topic, and I probably could have written uh, more. So uh, we were very happy to sort of uh, connect, and uh, I was ready to to write it, and they 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 saw the demand, and and so we made it happen. Okay, well, that's great. And even you're right, we, it's not for dummies, but. Uh, being humble when you implement data governance is one key aspect. So somehow you're a dummy at a certain stage of your maturity, and you need to learn to move uh, to move forward. And, and I think I mean your book is is great because it brings the uh, fundamentals and, and the different aspects with, with people. Uh, it, it's there <laughs> uh, with, with people uh, just not knowing where to start. In fact, because there are so many aspects to that. Uh, 
is, is very complex. Um, now, <clears throat> if you, you had this ID, but um, is it coming from real life um, uh, situations and, and, and issues and challenges you had that you were able to structure this book? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it comes from a place of uh, real practice. That's exactly right. Uh, I've been a, a chief information officer uh, in two uh, different types of organization. One was with uh, with a media company, with uh, O'Reilly Media. Some some of your mm -hmm. viewers and, and uh, participants may, may recognize that name. And then also uh, being the CIO and head of innovation for uh, uh, a notable city here in Silicon Valley, the city of, of Palo Alto. And you know, it, it, it became clear that in both instances, uh, data was remarkably important to the function of both organizations. And I, I knew very quickly that as the, as the head of technology uh, and as a thought leader and as a leader generally of the organization, that I would need to uh, understand, uh, manage data and govern data alongside my, my colleagues, but to take a leadership uh, role in that. Um, and, and so it, it comes from a place of practice, of a place of seeing the value. Uh, as we, in both organizations, uh, began to more formalize uh, our data assets, we saw better results. We, we, we were able to um, you know, be more data informed around a whole set of complex decisions that you know, any leader needs to make uh, every, every, every day, in fact, or many times a day. Um, uh, one of the sort of examples that I can give you is when I first started working uh, for a city, uh, you know, on Monday night, I would attend the council meetings where the council members would be, uh, you know, making their decisions around the community with input from community members. And back in 2011, it's like, you know, 12 years ago already, I noticed that uh, almost every time I would attend, council members would... I, I could see that they were frustrated and I can see that they wanted more data to be, to make data driven decisions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just the, the, the sentence would come up, you know, um, when having a dialogue with staff members, they would say, do you have data on this? Or can you share mm -hmm. data around this? Or what's, you know, what's the data say about this topic? And, and each time often the staff would say, well, we'll, uh, we, we don't have that here, but we'll, we'll go and we'll find it for you. We'll get it for you. And then, you know, weeks or maybe months would pass before the data could be assembled. So I saw this real deficit and I, I worked hard alongside my colleagues across the city uh, to make us more of a data driven city where uh, not only council members and staff, but also community members could access all sorts of data sets um, in a very um, uh, accessible uh, way. In fact, you know, uh, increasing what's called data uh, democratization. Mm -hmm. uh, enabling people to be able to get the data they want. And, and so we spun up, uh, for example, one of the first uh, really progressive uh, open data platforms that exists today, by the way. You can, you can visit it. It's free. It's data.cityofpaloalto.org. And um, you can see you know, tens, if not hundreds of data sets about everything from sustainability to transportation to energy use. And having that platform uh, and access to the data to easily download, to manipulate, to build reports on uh, has improved the dialogue between the community and the, uh, and the council members, but also enabled better decisions and better collaboration across all departments in the city. Yeah, it's important because I think being data driven doesn't mean that you have to ask explanations about the data. Is you need to be able to understand the data you have offhand and making the decision based on this data uh, and sh also sharing information. Um, in Europe, we, we have a couple of regulations where public sector needs to publish open data yeah. uh, on, on, uh, on ESG, on whatever. Uh, but you also need to understand what is part of these data sets uh, with a definition or with a calculation. So that's where governance plays a very important role in this understanding. That's right. Okay, so real real life example is very important. So now the uh, one million dollar question, uh, <coughs> well, one of the one million dollar questions. Do I um, do I get the million dollars? <laughs> okay, we'll share. <laughs> uh, 
because we hear data governance every day. I mean, data governance, digital transformation, uh, data-driven, self-service. I mean, there are, there are many, uh, many aspects to that. But if someone in an organization wants to start a real data governance program, uh, where and how should they start? Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope they're starting from a place of need, right? I hope they identify that, you know, this is not another bureaucratic exercise or another checkbox, uh, but but the organization begins with the at the point of like, if we implement some form of formal data governance, we can get better results, right? In some in some respect, we can uh, find the data we want. We can protect the data that needs to be protected, uh, that we can make better uh, decisions, that the quality of data is better, you know, so that we know we're looking at current data or data that has far less errors in it. So I hope the motivation comes from a place of real need. And I think that's an important starting point. But being more practical for a second in terms of like, what do we do next? You know, one of the questions I get often is, and concerns from leaders is this seems complicated and it even seems expensive. And this is a little bit of a myth. Uh, you can actually get results in formalizing how you, you know, uh, have oversight for your data uh, by starting small, by just starting small. Starting is key, right? <laughs> yeah, starting, starting is always important. So identify maybe one, maybe two data sets that are important to your organization. It could be your customer set, right? It could be your, your listing of customers. It could be your, your, your product listing or something. You know, things that are, you know, the fundamentals of, of most organizations. And determine, you know, are we leveraging that to the fullest extent? Uh, are we in compliance? You know, that, that's something that we need to be asking uh, more uh, frequently, particularly in highly regulated environments. Europe is a great example with GDPR. Uh, but increasingly here in the U.S. and in countries all over the world, you know, the compliance requirement around data uh, uh, across everything from how it's handled to how it's secured, how it's archived and stored and all, uh, you know, it's got more complicated and, and, and the penalties for not doing it correctly can be uh, increasingly severe. Uh, think about, for example, um, how, how you're keeping that data set current, right? You know, if a, if a customer is uh, if their address has changed or the name of a person has changed or the contact has changed. Do you have, you know, even a modicum of process to ensure that um, the, the, the right people within the organization know what to do uh, when there are those sort of triggers to change data? Um, so I say start small, identify one, two, you know, maybe three data sets, uh, get some results, demonstrate those results, and then start building out the program uh, from there. Yeah, uh, what I hear is the very nice music to my ears. I mean, uh, that, that's that's what that's what um, I, I'm preaching with my with my customers. Is first dare to start. I mean, you need to start. It's yes. not a perfect world, uh, but at least start. And, and sometimes uh, I'm not preaching for your, for my own church, but starting with an Excel sheet is is already a good way to start. I mean, try to document your data assets. And then once you get a bit more maturity, you will go for a, <clears throat> a robust platform and long-term sustainable uh, sustainable solution. And uh, I agree with you. Pick one or two data sets or, or one of, or two dashboards which are important to your organizations, which are your use cases. And in fact, you start documenting everything. And you build the mechanism of collaboration, um, data management, uh, and, and all the aspects of of uh, data government. So yeah, just start. Yeah, I can I can only agree uh, uh, with you. Um, now, what we see uh, often is indeed we start. I mean, you have a CDO, uh, you have the uh, management board who's ready to invest in data in, in general, but how can you build the next link with, with the business and ensure that literacy is there and adoption uh, is also there at the operational level. Yeah. You know, data governance is going to be one of those things that, first of all, is probably not going to be well understood. 
uh, when you first begin to think about it, if you are indeed the uh, the champion of it in your organization. Uh, so it's important to engage your colleagues and to educate and to have training uh, and really to emphasize the value. You know, CEOs and business leaders, organizational leaders have a lot of uh, priorities and they have a lot of things to choose from and you know that you can't do everything so it's it's really important that data governance is understood as something that is critical to organizational success and why and how it's measured so i think that's a that's an important characteristic of this now the other part of course i think which gets closer to your question is <laughs> we can't assume data literacy right and, and what we mean by data literacy is you know, just like, you know, we, we assume that people can read and write and, and kind of do basic math. Uh, do they know how to understand, interpret, manipulate and use data? And as you said in your comments a little earlier, even doing some basic work within Excel is a good starting point. Uh, you've got to grow from there. And we have to help our colleagues, uh, you know, become more data literate, how to take advantage uh, of, of data in, in every respect and how to handle it and how to protect mm -hmm. it and how to ensure you're compliant. And so uh, I, I think you've got to think, you've got to determine the, uh, you know, the gap between, you know, where the competency is across the organization and where you want to take it. Now, not everybody needs to be a data expert, right? But, you know, it might be interesting to give most staff you know, the basic skills of how to do a query, right? A, a, a SQL query, a select from where, you know, how, how can you do that? Or, or some basic Tableau um, or, um, you know, uh, uh, BI skills um, that are necessary uh, to, to, to actually increase people's uh, contributions towards success in the organization. So I, I, I think that's a, a really uh, a key, key part. Um, and I suppose the last point I would just make is, is do you have the do you have the capability for people to find the data they need right and and so the sort of the the, the data catalog as we say in the data governance world uh, have you got that in a formal way or or even uh is there some modicum of the ability to be able to search across the organization and find data sets and understand those data sets and and that's maybe kind of building on the last question you know what? What's next? Well, look, you you could have a lot of amazing data in your organization, but if you can't find it, and when you find it, you don't know if it's current, and you don't know who the mm -hmm. owner is, and you don't know uh, like the quality of it. Uh, that that can be a real um, uh, roadblock, right? It, it it can it can hold you up. So um, the you move from sort of data literacy to data democratization. We want to enable people to be able to find the data to be able to use it and have confidence in in the quality of that data yeah it's uh, yeah, it's very important uh, to, to democratize these uh, this data information uh, i tend also to explain uh, to to our customer uh, the data value chain i mean you, you produce right. data you transform data you value data and each one plays a role at some point in time in this uh, value chain and you need to know where you position yourself uh, what is expected from you and also what is the impact you might have um, or, or on the data because if you're working on the production line and you scan boxes the way you scan when I mean, you produce data it's equally important to a business analyst who will analyze a dashboard so everyone needs to understand the impact um, they, they have on, on this uh, value chain so yeah important That's right. Now, uh, now, now, let's say we identify the uh, the actions. We we know how to democratize, but how do we measure uh, the the success, in fact, uh, of these data governance initiatives in in organizations? Yeah, this is a great question and such an important one. Um, you know, there's, there's there's a few cliches around this. Of course, you know, we we uh, you only manage what you measure, um, and and so uh, it, it, there's truth to that, right? And I write a lot about that in, in, in my book. Um, 
what you what you want to do is first of all demonstrate value to those that are making investments in this. So you know you've made the case, you've, you've got in front of the C-suite, and you've said uh, data governance has all these high uh, qualities to them, and and if we do this, we'll we'll have these outcomes. Well, you need to come back a few months later and demonstrate that you're you know the organization is beginning to reach those outcomes. Um, particularly if you need to ask for more money or you need to grow the initiative and, and if you're going to get a continued support. So you do have, you have an obligation um, as, as a data governance leader or as a team to be able to, to demonstrate that value over time. Um, now, the team also wants to see the progress and you want to see where you have issues. Uh, and, and so you need to have that sort of uh, data dashboard or, or equivalent mm -hmm. Uh, to be able to see, you know, where, where are we having success? Uh, where, where are we not having success? And it can take, you know, many forms. Again, I say at the beginning, you know, that can be relatively informal, but as you progress and you mature your data governance, um, everything's just going to become um, more formalized. You'll probably need some tool sets. Um, mm -hmm. There are many different things we measure in data governance. You know, we, we um, one of the most important characteristics is data quality, right? So, um, uh, you, 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 we're going to have to identify early on what those metrics are. And it could be things like uh, you know, the accuracy of data uh, or the completeness uh, of the data set. Things like uh, how many issues were reported relative to data, how many uh, issues were corrected. So again, my book actually has a whole chapter on, on uh, you know, measuring metrics and, and monitoring. Um, and and you'll you know as a team you'll 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 identify those um, other aspects that you'll want to measure are the implementation of standards and adherence adherence to standards. Um, you know it, it, you don't want everybody playing off a different sheet of music, right? You, yeah, you want yeah, everybody yeah. sort of um, you know knowing what the goals are and and how to how to get there. A part of data governance we can't avoid it is policies. Our, our policies. Right? Um, how do we handle certain data sets? And policies have processes. Um, mm -hmm. So things like uh, conformance would be something you would measure. Uh, adherence, you know, and, and, and then even enforcement, uh, you know, uh, what, what was required to, to make it work. Um, so, you know, there, there, there are these aspects that there's another category just to be complete around technology, you know, the degree mm -hmm. to which tools are being used and people are attending training to use the tools, the amount of staff who have acquired uh, new skills around uh, data management and data governance. Uh, but what's really important is getting metrics that matter to you, right? Uh, I, I can, you know, you can have on your website lots of recommendations. I can include lots of uh, ideas and uh, suggestions in my book. But every organization has to say, you know, here are the metrics that are important to us. These are the things we want to measure because these are the outcomes we want. And I think that's what you have to sit down and decide. Bottom line is, and, and sort of to summarize, early on, just choose a few. Make it small. You know, don't, don't try to measure the world. And, uh, you know, get results, demonstrate those results, and then build it out. So this is a theme, as you can tell, with data governance is don't go all in. Start small and progressively mature the program over time. Yeah, it's a it's an iterative approach. Uh, if you try to to document everything in one go, you will you will get lost. In fact, and you will not be able to to measure and, and show progress. Uh, I like also this uh, uh, this approach of uh, focusing on what's important. I mean, at Data Galaxy, we are using um, OKRs as a as a methodology based on measure what matters. In fact. If it doesn't, yes. matter, don't don't spend time measuring it. I mean, it's totally uh, useless. Um, I also uh, I asked you that question, but I had the question of uh, measuring and return on investment on data governance, um, because I think uh, you can compare data governance to accounting. I mean, in an organization, do you ask the return on investment on accounting? I mean, you need to produce invoices, you need to collect money. You need to produce policies. You need to produce procedures on how you manage data. And it's a support function in your organization. So it's also a maturity uh, sign uh, that uh, in many organizations that people will not directly ask 
the return on, on this uh, on this initiative. But then, yes, you have return on data quality, remediation action, reducing the time to resolution, reducing the amount of issues. These are very tangible uh, tangible examples. Yeah, could I add something to that? Um, yeah. Which is sort of this this other kind of way to slice uh, how we use data. You've got sort of uh, what we call uh, defensive data, and then we we have offensive data. And in you're talking a lot there about defensive data, which is the things you have to do in your organization to run a good, you know, high performance organization, right? You need to ensure that people uh, uh, have the right skills to use data, that data is secure, that their process is in place, that data has high quality. Those are the things, you, you, you know, good organizations do that. When they do it, they make more money, they perform better. That's like, and, and, uh, and it's, as you say, uh, doing it right is probably more important than having a lot of metrics, you know, uh, ultimately. But the other side, which is uh, offensive data, is how do you use data then to win in the marketplace? You know, to identify new customers, to grow market share, uh, to uh, innovate, you know, build new products based on feedback. And those are a little bit better to measure. And actually, I mean, we know that we have to measure our marketing efforts, right? Um, so there is a way to connect, for example, investment with our data efforts uh, based on the results in the, in the offensive world. Uh, so, you know, you can think about where you want to play early on. We, we, all organizations do a little bit of both, uh, but when you yeah. begin to formalize data governance, you're probably focusing early on in the defensive measures. And then as you get more confident and mature, you go after the offensive measures. Um, and, and so that's another way of sort of thinking about the, the universe or the galaxy of data. <laughs> <laughs> the, galaxy of, the galaxy of data, indeed. But it, it's also the confidence level you can have in your data. If, yeah. if you're starting from, from far and, and your maturity is not there and you can't trust your data, I mean, you need to be offensive first and, and clean up everything and then move on the strategic side on data valorization and and making sure that it's competitive advantage, but uh, it's a, it's a journey in fact before you you can reach uh, you can reach that point. Okay, well, great talk. I really like it. I think we can talk about hours and uh, and hours about that. Uh, <laughs> I, I read your book. There are plenty of of, of good advices and and, and and best practices. Uh, if you, I would say, had to pick, let's say, five best practices. Uh, to, to be successful with your data governance uh, in your organization, what, what would that be? Uh, yeah, thanks thanks for this. And yes, it, it, it's, uh, it was a hard actual question to, as I'm thinking about it, and, and as you told me in advance uh, to think about it, uh, hard to find a five. But but here are, are, in my study of literally, you know, hundreds of organizations as I was writing my book and doing my research, here, here's what emerged as key success factors. Um, probably more than anything is you got to have buy-in. So, so don't move forward if you don't have buy-in from leadership. Um, you got to get the, the CEO and the whole C-suite on board. You got to get your colleagues. Uh, the organization has to come with the data governance team uh, on the journey. And, 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 and they're going to go on the journey if they understand how the goals of data governance align with the goals of the organization, right? If they're misaligned, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, so, you know, you might say, uh, and I'll just kind of make up a quick example here. You know, uh, a, an organization has been literally getting fines for not being compliant, let's say about the handling of medical data, right? And a goal is to, we want to reduce our fines or we want to be, uh, ensure that we are uh, fully compliant and, um, not have to deal with that issue. And that requires a change of approach. It, it requires some more formality, frankly, requires data governance to ensure you have high compliance in data responsibilities. Um, so that's a really nice alignment between, you know, the, the needs of the organization and the uh, value that data governance brings to the table. So that would be the, the number one, probably by a long shot, right? Um, you know, I, yeah. if I was the data governance leader and I, I you know, I walked into the, uh, I, I had an opportunity to speak to the, to the board, to the, to, sorry, the C-suite, to the, the, the CEO, the chief operating officer, you know, the, the chief HR officer that, and 
I wasn't getting a warm reception and I was leaving perhaps with people confused or not fully supporting me, I would be hesitant to, to, to jump into the program. Uh, I'd want to come back. I'd want to make sure I could make a very convincing case. It, very close to this suggestion is the importance of having a sponsor, having an executive sponsor. And that could be you. I mean, if you're you know, a senior, uh, maybe the chief data officer, you might be uh, the sponsor. You, you kind of want a, a business leader and not necessarily a tech aligned leader. Uh, data governance is not a tech responsibility. Let's let's just say that up front, right? Um, although histor historically, uh, the, I the, the IT organization has been considered, you know, what we call a data custodian. Um, yeah, but just because we keep it in a data center or, or manage it in the cloud, it doesn't make IT responsible for, um, you know, ensuring that data is high quality, is actually driving success in the organization. Uh, so you probably you, you need to find out who is that sponsor and hopefully that person will stay with you on the journey. They won't uh, sort of jump out three months in, but they'll stay with you for a couple of years. And as the program becomes routine, uh, sure, the sponsor the sponsor can can change. The third thing I would say is and I've, I've said this a couple of times, but it's worth repeating. I don't feel like it's, uh, you know, it's it's uh, redundant is, uh, you know, start the program small and then build it over time. Um, those that jump in, they want to get results, right? Let, let's give people credit. People want to see results. So they jump in, they buy tools, they, they roll out big education programs and they, uh, they end up not having the, the success they want. And, and the fact that the, the, the statistics on this are pretty sobering, you know, it, it, according to one research organization, uh, about 90% of organizations are not that successful on their first attempt at data governance. Um, so be careful, you know, uh, yeah. you don't, you don't want to try it. And then it fails, you know, bigly. <laughs> and then, and, well, and then and that's true. We, what we we've seen from a, a last survey, the tenure of, uh, of CDO is, is about two years. Yeah. Uh, after two years, they, they're, they're gone. So I think it's very difficult exercise. And it's about the mandate you get from from your board, yeah, uh, to to execute. It's it's a tough job. It's a tough job. It's a tough job, uh, but it's uh, really rewarding, and and it really can be a, a game changer. Uh, the um the so so that was the third one, starting small. The next one, uh, well, I have two sort of like that that kind of fall into the the fourth category. <clears throat> um, it's like four uh, A and four B. And they're related, which is what you asked me about earlier, um, is measuring and understanding the data literacy in your organization. Uh, you know, without the, the skills, people can't do the job you're asking them to do. Um, this is something I discovered as, a, as an IT leader over, over a couple of decades, is uh, people want to be successful, but often they haven't been given the training the, and the tools to be successful. Um, so it's just, it's frustrating for everybody. It's frustrating to you as a manager. And it's even more frustrating to the individual who wants to do their best, but, but aren't, aren't being empowered to do that. Um, so you need to understand who needs data skills uh, and, and, and the program to make that happen. Uh, I think that's uh, something that you'll, you're going to have to assess early on, uh, possibly prior to rolling out the formal program. Um, so that you can ensure that the components of data literacy are baked into the program. Connected to that, though, the 4B here is um, is deciding and, again, early on determining the degree to which you actually have a data culture, right? Uh, do you have a, are you part of an organization that, <clears throat> oops, I'm not sure if I'm still connected. Seems like I'm disconnected, but I'm going to try something here in a moment. Well, we seem to have lost uh, Lauren, but I'm going to continue. <laughs> uh, 
and um, we'll we'll wait till he comes back. Um, uh, according to the information I see on my screen, I, I, I had a connection issue. Sorry. Hello, welcome back. I was uh, trying to fill in some time there. <laughs> um, no, no problem at all. This uh, this is incredible. You know, I'm in California. You're in Belgium, and uh, we're doing this online. It's it's pretty cool that it works at all. Um, so I, where I was before we got disconnected there briefly was just talking about the, the nature of uh, uh, determining if you have a, a data culture at all. You know, do people think of data as a rich asset? Do they think about uh, data-driven decision-making? Um, are they able to elevate uh, data questions and use data tools? And this is just sort of scratching the surface of what it means to have a, have a data culture. So that's not something you're going to get overnight, by the way, and you shouldn't have that as a near term goal. Uh, you know, setting expectations, saying, you know, in the first year, we're going to build a data culture in this organization. Yeah. You know, it sounds good, but I, I'm not sure that it's credible. But but making progress towards that is is really important. And finally, again, uh, I'm glad that we're repeating some things here because it's, it reinforces some key points around being. Uh, you know, uh, having a program that really makes sense and really adds value is uh, is identifying some early metrics. Um, you know, it, you do have to have some mechanism by which you can say, this is where we were and this is where we are now. And this is where we want to be, right? Here are our sort of goals. We want to have, for example, um, in, in our major data sets, uh, we want to have, a, you know, uh, between uh, 85 and 95 percent accuracy. Um, but right now, in our valuation, we're we're seeing about 70 percent, right? And so that gives you sort of like the historical. Then you can say, hey, right now we were 70 percent, but we've just done an audit. We're at 78 percent, but we're headed towards, you know, more of an 85 to 90 percent accuracy uh, rate. So I think those are are some key. Uh, uh, areas. Maybe the last one that kind of traverses all of these uh, that I, I, I some, sometimes omit to share is, is really understanding uh, how uh, easy it is to find data in the organization. Uh, do, do you have good search capabilities? Do you have a data catalog or something equivalent to enable um, all staff to be able to access the data they need to do their work? I mean, that's, to me, again, it comes down to uh, if you can't find the data, uh, you know, what good is any of this? Um, and then when you find it, if it's bad quality, again, what good is any of this? Yeah, it's uh, it's important. I, I, well, I have the same top five. Uh, this is, I was uh, pitching this morning with, um, with a couple of uh, enterprises on, on what are the, the best practices on implementing data governance and data catalog. I mean, it's exactly the same top five. I Great. am a big fan of uh, of uh, um, data maturity assessment, build your baseline to understand where you stand, and, and then you can track progress. Uh, that, that's very important, and also it's very factual, in fact, uh, because yes. we all think we master our data, we know our data. But uh, I mean, you can go to the board and ask about uh, the, the the meaning of an indicator or, or KPI or, or a date. You will might have ten different uh, answers. So because because there is no uh, centralized information, there is no centralized way to find the information and find the um, the meaning. Okay, time is uh, running by, so let, let's jump into the uh, the other question uh, for you. Uh, now, looking at the future, how do you see uh, data governance uh, evolving? And we are hearing about artificial intelligence. We are hearing about ChatGPT, which is a big buzz uh, nowadays. Yeah. Do you think it will impact, I mean, uh, data governance? Uh, I do in a very big way. Uh, they'll impact each other. Um, so I look at um, you know, artificial in intelligence and data governance through two different lenses. And, and I speak about this and write about it in, in my book. The first is uh, everyone needs to understand, and I think people are learning about AI uh, in, in new ways uh, right now, is that the basis of good artificial intelligence is good data, right? That the source of ChatGPT is a massive volume of the world's data, right? So let's not lose sight of the fact that there is no, you know, ChatGPT without massive, massive data sets, right? And, and the better quality they are, uh, the better the results. 
Now, what you're going to see is, uh, you know, versions of ChatGPT, GPT, excuse me, that you can point to your own data sets. So there will be internal versions, right? And that is even more important because if you want to get good results when you are uh, running the, uh, you know, the training data, which is your organizational data into the models to produce results, um, if you put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. So yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the importance of having uh, really good data sets that your AI points to uh, is, is uh, more important than ever. So uh, that is, you know, a very strong argument for data governance right there. Right, which comes down to data quality, data accuracy, mm -hmm. data completeness. Right. Um, so, artificial intelligence, ChatGPT, and all the AI uh, uh, remarkable emergences we're going to see in the next few months and years um, will be tied directly to uh, to data. Um, so that that's you know on the sort of enablement piece of it. But the other side is how will artificial intelligence help us uh, work with data for better results? Right. I mean, you we there is AI already built into things like Microsoft Excel and, and many of the other commercial um, data products. And and so, uh, you know, where, where uh, for example, you needed to be uh, much more competent at uh, putting together a query or building a report. Uh, what we're going to see is, uh, you know, you, you can either just uh, type in in plain English, I want the following report, and AI is going to uh, find the data, spin up the report, you know, make it look beautiful, and then mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it'll do that work for you. Um, and, and it's already doing that. So what we're going to see in the next few months uh, is a leap in terms of the capabilities of tools to support the data, data governance function, right? And that's good news for everyone. That's great news. Uh, yeah. uh, so, uh, so you see. So, the, the, let's be real clear: artificial intelligence and data governance are really good friends. They work they, together. They, they will work uh, hand in hand. Uh, agree, agree. Um, now, a, a bit on another topic. Uh, you sure. also wrote a book on, on smart cities. Uh, how do you see? the correlation between smart cities and data governance. Yeah. You know, sometimes people might think that, um, you know, I kind of write just books that are interesting and they're maybe not connected. Um, but there is a lot of connectivity between uh, the books that I write. Uh, first of all, one theme is I, I, I try to write books that are, um, you know, about topics that are important and, in high demand. I, I want, you know, fundamentally, I'm an educator, so I'm trying to help people be successful. I mean, that's what I wake up every day trying to do. And and so, you know, one after another, these books are about uh, topics that are important, relevant, and and, and in high demand. Um, beyond that, though, there, there's connective tissue, right? They, they often have a technological component to them. Um, that's my field, you know, uh, technology leadership. And um, and data is underlying almost maybe if I think about it all my books, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, you know, the 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 city topic is a hot one, right? We are now an urban planet. Uh, increasingly, uh, more and more people are moving into cities. By the middle of the century, you know, eighty percent of all humanity will live in a city context. So cities are really important. It's where we're gonna you know, uh, where, where we play, where we live, you know, where we work. And it's also the place where we'll either destroy the planet <laughs> or help fix the planet, uh, yeah. you know, because uh, uh, cities are the major contributor towards our climate crisis. Um, and things like transportation, things like energy, these are all big uh, city topics. Um, what I found after a year of writing uh, and researching my data governance book is that data is the most important asset in every organization today. Right. I wasn't entirely convinced of that a year and a half ago, but today I'm very convinced uh, that data is the most important asset. And that applies to cities, too, right? in a big, big way. City leaders want to have better data to make better decisions. Uh, city solutions you know, need data to function better. Uh, communities want more good quality data to, um, to make their democracies richer, to have greater participation. Um, mm -hmm. If you think about something like um, the Internet of Things, right? The cities today are the largest 
utilizers of the Internet of Things. So this is your, you know, you, you deploy a series of cheap sensors. You're capturing some data. You're processing it at the point of capture or you're sending it to the cloud. You're then doing, you know, again, some processing. Perhaps you're doing some analysis and then you're, uh, you're actioning it or you're taking some decision uh, based on, on the data you received. And we're using that for air quality, for water quality, for traffic management, for emergency for management. Traffic. Yeah, in so many ways. And what's really uh, uh, what's really key here is that at the end of the day, what is the Internet of thing, Things? It is a data machine, <laughs> right? Yeah, it, the it internet produces data every second. <laughs> it it is actually it is absolutely a data machine. You know, yeah, it does yeah, some yeah. other things, but fundamentally, it, it's it's managing uh, and and uh, helping us run things better through data. Um, yeah, so sure. you know, the, the, that's just scratching the surface of the linkage between data governance and smart cities. They are, you know, again connected at the hip. Uh, yeah, really yeah. important. Very important. Okay, nice, nice. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Jonathan. Um, before. Um, uh, Answering questions, if any, I will I will have a kind of a fireside uh, question for you. Uh, yes. uh, what's what's the name of the person who inspires you the most? <laughs> um, well, one um, answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, my father. Okay, uh, I would I would have answered exactly the same. What is your favorite food? You know, I'm running the data governance kitchen, so it's a very important topic for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many, um, but um, you know this is actually Belgium, I believe. It has Belgian art French fries, French fries. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect answer. Good. Uh, what's your favorite movie? <laughs> uh, Saving Private Ryan. Oh, good one as well. Uh, what are you afraid of? Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so personally, it's, uh, it's not fulfilling my potential. Okay. Okay. That's, uh, that's also a, a good one. Uh, if you would be a, the bad guy or a bad guy, who would you be? <laughs> um, Elon Musk. <laughs> 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 we, we agree again. <laughs> Uh, I mean, very clever guy, but uh, there, there are things not going right. Uh, what's your favorite movie? Then uh, I ask it. Sorry, um, uh, which book uh, impacted you the impacted you the most? Book, book, data governance for dummies. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think? Which piece of technology is the most useful to you? Um, a, a web browser. It's the window to the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. And what's your favorite uh, band or or singer? The Beatles. Hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm more a heavy metal uh, fan, but uh, no, but they, they definitely impacted their generation. It's, it's yes. amazing how they created something in, in music. Um, what is the most important human value? To you? Uh, I, I, I love this question, uh, but it's so tough because you want one. Um, uh, outside of the obvious, I would say curiosity. Yeah, it's, it's a mindset which allows you to try to learn and discover new things uh, every day. Last one is, what's your favorite quote? Beside data governance is important. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right. Um, find your song and sing it every day. I, I yeah. Did, did you uh, make it up or it's uh, I don't know it. Uh, so, uh, but it's, it's I didn't make. Nice oh, okay. I didn't make it up. I, I okay. and I actually sorry. I, I I don't know who to I don't know who to give credit to. Yeah, yeah, but it, it, yeah. It's, uh, it's highly meaningful. 
Okay, uh, I, I don't see that we have any uh, any question from uh, from the audience. So, um, uh, Jonathan, thank you very much uh, for being here uh, today. It was a pleasure. I mean, I really enjoyed your book. I enjoyed the talks uh, with you. We are evangelists. We preach the good words on data governance every day. I mean, uh, and also people in organizations. I mean, everyone is an evangelist. Everyone needs to preach data governance, walk the talk, communicate. It's also one big uh, success factor in, in implementation. So thank you very much for being there, Jonathan. Thank you very much, Laurent. It was such okay. a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, take care. Talk to you soon. Bye.